but I was thinking through the topic all in, and it brought me back to a memory I had with some friends of mine. Um, a friend of mine, his name was Christian, still is Christian, and his, his, his dad's name is Christian, so they have the same name, and his dad got this letter in the mail for a free dinner, and we were all really excited. We were young in high school, like, you know, you get free meal, like, we're all in on dinner, no matter what, where it is, and it was at this place called Tony Romo's which is out there by Red Robin, and it's something different. Oh, it's Olive Garden now. Um, that's where it was. And so we were really excited. We got free meal. We're like, it was for four of us. And we're like, oh, man, free meal. Your dad got it for some reason. We didn't even know what it was for. So we walk in this back room, and we're really excited. We get a free fancy meal, and we find out it's a sales presentation. <laughs> and so we're like 16, 18, and clearly the youngest people in the room, the next youngest person was over 60. It was some sales presentation for magnets or arthritis medication or something. Uh, and, and we were like, who cares, man? It's a free meal. It's a good meal. So we sat, we found our table over here, and you could tell the presentation guy was just like, what are these guys doing? And, but I mean, his name is Christian. It's on the sheet. It's like four free meals. What are they going to do, kick us out? So we sat there, and halfway through his presentation, he is talking. He's like, listen, everybody. Nobody came here for just the free meal. And he looks over at us and says, okay, not everybody came here for just the free meal. Like, we, we didn't know what we were getting into, but clearly in that meeting, we were not like all there. We were, we were just sitting for the free meal. How many of you, honestly, let's just have a, 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 an honest time here. How many of you have done the timeshare presentation stuff or that kind of meeting, and it's just been for the free gift, right? <laughs> okay, yep, both hands are up. Absolutely. Right, you're willing to suffer like four hours of torture and pain and anguish, no joke, for a free gift. Like vacation or something really cool. Angie and I have done it a couple times, and like... <laughs> We go to these meetings and we're not all in on the conversation at all. We are only there for the free gift. So we're not all in at all. Like we are just there because we want something out of it. And so many times we treat our Christianity, our relationship with God like that. We go through the motions. Now, every one of us do it. Me too. Not, don't feel judgment or anything like that. But we all go through the motions. We come to church to check a box. We read the Bible to check a box, and we're not anywhere near all in on our relationship with God. You can think about your timeshare presentation and how you sat in that chair and it's just like, get it over with, dude. No, I'm not buying. You can send me to the next guy, but I'm not buying. You can have him like, make me feel guilty all you want to. Like, just pour it on. I'm not buying. And so many times that's our mentality when it comes to the things of God. Maybe parts of it we're all in on, but other parts of it we're not all in on. And so my question to you today is, are you all in? And I just want you to think about it today. I want you to simmer in your relationship with God. Are you all in? There's a saying in, in poker that is this phrase, all in always wins. And it's said when someone is pushing in and they don't have very many chips and so they push in all the way and they win and they get to triple up their chips a little bit and the big dogs will say, yeah, all in always wins because that guy didn't have anything to risk. And clearly in the game of poker, that is not an accurate statement. <laughs> Some of you know, painfully, but many of you have played and said, uh, I'm going all in and see you tomorrow. Like, hopefully, see you the next day, whatever. All in doesn't always wins. But I guarantee you, in your relationship with God, all in always wins. All in always wins. He's not going to let you down. There's a friend of mine who was talking to me at the movie night, and he was working his job, and, and he, he just kind of felt like he was unsatisfied in his job, and he just knew there was more for him. But he'd been there for so long, you know, 15, 20 years, and and life, you know, was, it was a decent job. It was solid. It wasn't going anywhere. It was the way it should be. But just he wasn't happy or satisfied. And he said, you know what? I'm not going to live life unhappy, angry, not seeing my family or seeing them. And when I do see them, I'm frustrated. I'm not happy. And so you know what? I'm going to go all in. I'm going to look for another job. Found another job. 
paid way less, but he said, you know what? This is a company I could see myself with for a long time. I'm happy here. I could see myself getting promoted. So I'm going to risk it. I'm going to step out. I'm going to go all in on my profession here. I'm going to quit my job and sacrifice. I'm going to have to get a second job for a while, which he's currently doing right now, working two jobs. But he just got a promotion. He just stepped up the ladder, and he's getting progress. And he said, you know what? I'm going to risk it all, and I'm going to be all in in his profession and in this career. And that's a great example of what we can do in trusting Jesus. Can we step out? And can we be all in? Because I don't know where it is for you. We all struggle somewhere in our relationship with God. Maybe our belief system of him. Maybe in our finances. Maybe in our health. Maybe in our relationships. God said do it this way, but man, it just doesn't make a lot of sense in my brain, so I'm not going to go all in. I'm not going to push all my chips in because I'm not confident in the cards you've given me, God. So I'm not pushing all in. I'll give you a few, but I'm not going to give you all of them. And so today I want to look at a few stories in Scripture that these guys were all in with God. We spent the summer talking about encounters with God, and it was these amazing people who had had great encounters with God and how it changed their life from that point on. And I want to hope today that you would have an experience with God, an encounter with God, and you said, okay, today, God, I'm pushing all in. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I'm pushing all in, and I'm going to trust you because with him, all in, always wins. And these two stories I'm going to read today are exact examples of what that is. One of them is my favorite in Matthew chapter 14. It's Jesus has just fed the 5,000 people or 5,000 people. These disciples have experienced this incredible miracle. Hey, we only have five loaves, two fish, and there's 5,000. Some say 15,000 people because it was only 5,000 men. And so there's 15,000 people, but put yourself in their place that you just saw this incredible miracle. And they are wowed by Jesus and what he can do and what he's able to do because he's God in the flesh. And so this happens Jesus goes to go spend some time with God. He goes off in the wilderness and the disciples go out in the boat. And that's where they're at and Jesus is away from them. They just saw this miracle. Remember this. So ver, uh, chapter 14, verse 24, we're going to read a few verses. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land. For a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. Now I'd like you to put yourself in the story. Okay, like maybe you're not in a boat. Maybe you're not in waves, but... Has life felt like this before? I got a bad doctor's report. I got, I got a bad financial situation happening. Some of it's my fault. Maybe it's not. Whatever. Like, I'm in heavy waves. Verse 25. About 3 o'clock in the morning, pitch black, really dark. They didn't have lights on their boats, so they couldn't see much, right? Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. I, that's crazy. <laughs> You've all tried that before in the pool? Maybe just me, right? <laughs> Run really fast. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified in fear. They cried out, it's a ghost, right? But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid. Take courage. It's me. I'm here. It's me. I love Peter. Chapter, verse 28. Then Peter called to him, Lord... If it's really you, if you're not lying and it really is you, let's put your money where your mouth is. Let's do this. Tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. Right? Maybe stop there for a second. Side note, you can ask big stuff of God. Oh, it's not possible with my bank for me to get that loan. Or it's not possible for me to get this. I don't have the qualifications. Just ask. Why not? Why not step out and ask God and say, okay, God, this could be good. Why not become a fireman? Yeah? yeah? yeah. Right? Why not? Why not? Why not ask God? Because God's a big God, and God's like, not going to say no to you if it's within what he wants you to do for your life. Don't ask him if you can go get drunk and smoke weed today. Like, that's not helpful. But say, <laughs> right, right, right? <laughs> Cut it off. Cut it off. But like, up until this point in history, I don't feel like many humans have walked on the water. So Paul, Peter's frame of reference is saying, I'm going to trust you, God. Hey, I'm going to think outside the box here. Think outside the box in your career, in your marriage, in your family, in your life, in your health. It's not possible with the doctors, but maybe it is with Jesus. Just ask him. Jesus says, yeah, come on, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on water toward Jesus. 
Verse 30. But when he saw the strong wind, and real life happened, and it became unstable, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Verse 31. Jesus immediately, I love that, he immediately reached out. I Peter messed up. He shouldn't have been kept in it. You have that talk. You got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Absolutely. But he didn't. He started to fall and Jesus didn't say, bro, you really should have kept it. Go ahead. Learn your lesson while you're underwater for about four minutes, right before you stop struggling. And then I'll pick you up. Immediately he reached out and grabbed him. But then he encourages him and he says, man, Peter, you have so little faith. Jesus said, why? Why did you doubt me? I feel like Jesus is asking you that today. Why, why do you doubt me in your life? I don't know what it is for you, but you do. Why do you, why do you doubt me? See, Peter goes all in on this. He just says, God, I am going to absolutely trust you. I'm going to put my faith in you. And I love that picture, what Jesus says. He says, trust me, I got you. I got your back. Wait on me. I want to look at another encounter with God, and then we'll make all these make sense. But in Luke chapter 9, excuse me, 19, verses 1 through 10. This is the story of Zacchaeus, which is a, f- a famous story. We've taught on it before here, but I want to read through it quickly, and then I want to bring some points home to you today. Jesus a- entered Jericho and made his way through the town. Verse 2. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. Climbed up in... All right, we won't go there. Erica, help me lead that in that reserve. He was a chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. Now, tax collectors said this before, but if you don't know, tax collectors are the worst of the worst. They're like slimy and they're evil almost. Like they were stealing people. They would do tax farming. Like, so he is looked upon as just scum of the earth. Nobody likes Zacchaeus because he's stealing from them. That's what everybody knows and thinks when they look at him. And he's short, so he's got some strikes against him. Zacchaeus, right? So verse three, He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. Verse 4. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. He knew something about this Jesus. He'd heard about Jesus. Verse 5. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus, right? What the world has seen as scum of the earth. What the world has viewed as horrible, unsavable, evil people. Jesus looks up at Zacchaeus and calls him by name. I doubt many people called him by name. They probably spit on him. They probably kicked him. They probably yelled at him. But Jesus says, Zacchaeus, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. And there's so much in this story. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. Verse 7, but the people We're displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner. They grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord, ignoring everybody around him, not caring about the fact that he's looked down upon because he's with God Almighty. How does God have a right to be with such a horrible person? That's why they're disgusted. But Zacchaeus is able to shut them out and says, I will give half my wealth to the poor, Lord. He's repenting and saying, God, what do I got to do here? I want to push all in with you. I will, or, um, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Verse 9, Jesus responded, Salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. Others said maybe this man pushed all in with me. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a lost person like me. Amen. Saved a lost person like you. This is why Jesus came. I love these pictures of, Abra- um, of, uh, of Peter and Zacchaeus. And so I want you to think even a little bit more about the question I asked earlier. Are you all in? Are you all in in your relationship with God? And so I want to ask you three questions that will hopefully get you to the point that you can answer this question. Are you all in? And I think when we push all in in our life, 
we push all in in our belief and our, in our, in our trust in God. We need some stability and we need to say, okay, when things get scary and rough, we need to be able to ask us these questions and say, okay, am I really all in? But we need some comfort, we need some peace, and we need to know that God is with us through this. So hopefully these questions help. Number one is what is your belief level? Like what do you believe God can do? Right? Jesus, or Peter asked to go overboard and step on the ocean. He's thinking outside the box because he believes Jesus can do it. We talked a couple weeks ago about renewing your mind, Angie and I, and your life is exactly what it is today because of the way that you are thinking, because of your thought processes. And so what is your belief level of what Jesus can do? Like, I wonder what Peter was thinking before he saw Jesus. I wonder what Zacchaeus was thinking before he climbed the tree to see Jesus. Like he's got this perception of maybe Jesus would accept me. Maybe I just need to see this guy who accepts me. I think I'm worthless. I've been here and I'm worthless from everybody else. The world system tells me I'm worthless, but maybe Jesus can offer me something. Peter thinks outside the box and says, maybe Jesus would want me to step out of the boat and walk on water. Their belief level before they even do it, is at an all-time high in their life. When you play poker, you got to believe that your chips are better, that your cards are better than the other person's to push all in. Well, let me tell you, you got the unbeatable hand with you, and it's the blood of Jesus, which is what you're holding, and when you push all in, the enemy cannot beat you because you have the unbeatable hand, the royal flush of all royal flushes. But do you believe it? What is your belief level. In the middle of the storm, in the middle of anguish and hurt and pain and everything going on around him, Peter steps out. At Zacchaeus' all-time low, he believed that Jesus would do something for them. A lot of questions today, but what's your belief level of Jesus? What's your belief in Jesus? What do you think Jesus wants to do and can do in your life? I want you to ask yourself that this week. What do I believe of God? Do I believe he wants the best for me? Do I even think he can heal me or my family? Can I stand on the word of God? Do I believe in it? And at times, just like Peter, it gets hard. It gets hard to believe. And David has a great passage in the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 30, in verse 6. I think many of us have felt this way. Now David was greatly distressed. He's got a belief in God but he's greatly distressed because everybody around him spoke of stoning him. That's a pretty scary moment right there. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. So they're angry, so they're going to kill the leader because they're angry. Every man for his sons and his daughters. And the verse goes on. But David, what? Strengthened himself in the Lord his God. When all hell breaks loose in your life, and you can't, you try to call somebody, you try to have the relationship, God has given you enough on the inside of you, can you strengthen yourself? Next week we're going to talk about the importance of others and the importance of community, hence small groups, but my question to you today is can you strengthen yourself just like David did in your belief system of who God is in your life? Can you be confident in who he is? Second question I want to ask you today, what's your belief level, but what's your risk level? Or what's your level of risk? Grammatically, these might not be the way to say it, but it looked better, so that's the way we ask this question. (laughs) Craig, you can judge me later. So what is your risk level? How much risk are you willing to take? My good friend who quit his job took some risk, started back at the bottom of the barrel and said, I, I want to be fulfilled in my life and in my relationship with God and in my job and my community. I want my family to have a better life. And so I'm going to take a risk and I'm going to step out. And I'm going to start at the bottom of the barrel and believe God that he would meet me where I'm at. Peter had to actually trust that he wouldn't sink right away. Like, right? What is that? Jesus, tell me to come out there. And then he actually steps on water. Like, it's a great story in ch- kids' church, but what when it's real life? Like, many of you have felt like that with tithing. Many of you have felt like that in believing in healing. Many of you have felt like that before in stepping out on the water and you're like, man, this is so scary. Are you willing to do that? When I was a kid, Carl, um, who has 
uh, sang a lot of songs with our kids. We sang the books of the Bible song. We sang Daniel in the Lion's Den. If you missed those, they're on our website but, um, or on our YouTube channel. You can go check them out. But he wrote a lot of songs, and one of his songs he wrote was, I'd rather be a wet water walker than a dry boat rider. Right? It, right? Nicely done, Carl. Nicely done. I think we should teach our kids that one next, okay? So that's a fun one. So a lot of repeats, and we could teach you now, but we don't have time. So, um, But man, I'd rather be wet and have some failures in life and have some frustrations in life than just be dry and be safe and not, not achieve the potential that God intended for my life. Step out of the boat. Risk getting wet, and God will meet you. Henry Ford said this said, too many men are afraid of being fools. I think one of the biggest fears we have is what will other people think of me? What if I pray for my coworker? What if I invite him to church? What if I tell him about my story? A couple weeks ago, we shared some of our stories. Last week, Labor Day, we encouraged you to share your stories in your workplace, with your, uh, among your family, in your community. But that can be scary. Because why? Because we're afraid of people. And I am too. I'm afraid of what I will look like sometimes. I'm afraid of what might be on the other end of a conversation or what they might say. I'm nervous about it because I'm scared of what other people think of me. And Paul says this in the book of Galatians chapter 1 and verse 10. It says, obviously, Paul's great, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. Don't let other people's opinions of you spoil what God wants to do on the inside of you. Step out and take a risk. Sometimes, sometimes we deal with more than the fear of other people, though. We deal with the fear of an actual situation. We fear of creditors, and we fear of losing a relationship. We fear of our health, right? We got a bad doctor's report, and, and it's legit. Like, we actually fear this thing. And David... Same David that we talked about earlier is instructing his son in building the temple. And they're in a similar situation in 1 Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 20. It says, Then David continued to Solomon, Be strong and courageous. Do the work. Don't stop. It's scary, but don't stop. Some of us in our recovery journey, do the work. Don't be scared. Get in a 12-step group. Get in relationships. Encourage yourself in the Lord. But do the work. Don't be afraid or discouraged for the Lord God, and then he says this, my God, who I killed the giant with, who I've seen and experienced. So David says, son, I've felt this, I've experienced it, I know who this God is in my life. The Lord God, my God, who I know it will come through for you, he is with you. He's with you. The verse goes on, and it says, I think, doesn't it? Yeah, he will not fail you. Hmm. He will not fail you. He will not forsake you. He will send it or send to it that, sorry. He will see to it that all the work related to the temple, what he's challenged with right now, what he's facing of the Lord is finished correctly. God wants to say that to you today. Your recovery journey will finish correctly. Your marriage will finish correctly. Your finances will finish correctly. If you trust Jesus, and take a risk and step out and do what he says to do and trust him. Yeah. He will not fail you. Amen. He will not forsake you. David's speaking from experience. And today I want to encourage you, I want to be David, that God is with you. Are you all in in your relationship with Jesus? Are you all in in your connection with Jesus? Because he will not forsake you. I've seen it happen in my life over and over and over again. And I can testify today that God is good and yes. cares about every intimate detail of your life. Yes, amen. And he will not fail you. Yes, Whether you like him or hate him, Mark Zuckerberg says this, the only strategy that is guaranteed to fail is not taking risks. The only strategy that's guaranteed not to fail or that, that is guaranteed to fail is not stepping out of the boat and getting wet. I'd rather be a wet water walker than a dry boat rider. God's with you. Can you step out? What's your risk level? And finally today, here's my question. I have to explain it. What's your click level? What's your click level? So 
You get music examples because I'm a musician and I love to worship and I know all of you love to worship too. But musically, there's a thing that a lot of bands will play with, especially worship teams, and it's called a click. Anybody aware of what a click is before? <laughs> Lucas raised his hands first. You're the man, right? Not a lot of you. So what happens is there is this constant noise that happens in the background that keeps us together. So great example was Jesus that it happened. So you walked in, we started singing a song, I got all excited, and I'm like, hey, everybody clap your hands. It was way faster than the click. So that's why we train wrecked this morning. I'm like, oh, my bad, everybody, because the click is a different pace than what I started the clap at. Right. Your life ever felt like that before? Yeah. Man, I am, I am all over the page. I am all over the board. Eric over here on guitar, God bless him. He's amazing. He's a next level musician. Like, he's playing one thing. I'm playing another. Scott's trying to keep us on with the click. Like, it's a train wreck. We got there. It was okay. We got there. But when we're talking earlier and we're rehearsing, we're saying, hey, is your click up? When somebody's off, I'm like, Rosemary, is your click up? I love you. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not joking, actually, at all. But, um... It's true. It's okay. Me too. I, when I first started playing with the click, it was like, is your click up? Because it's the constant. It's the thing that never leaves. It's the thing that's annoying. But once you settle in a groove, it disappears. So my question today is, what's your click level? So what's my click? You're going to ask. I'm going to show you. All right? Don't hold, or hold on a second. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 17. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into what? God's love. Amen. And keep you strong. And keep you strong. And may, or, and may you have the power, this is Paul talking to us, may you have the power to understand all, uh, as all God's people should, me and you today, how wide, how long, how high, how deep yeah. his love is. That's your click. That's it. Yes. When it gets scary, when it gets hard, yep. Yep. what's your click level? What's your level of awareness that God loves you. Can you go back to that? Because when it all sounds beautiful and wonderful, I want to show you an example here. Okay, we, we play with this iPad. Yes, we have a lot of musicians in here in this iPad that we play with. So if you were wondering. So don't turn the click up, Dan. Just put the music up if you can. Is it playing? That's the click. Can you turn the click down? Or is it just playing? Oh, it's the headphones over here. Hang on a second. This is going to be good, okay? That's how loud Scott has to have it. Okay, so... All right, so the music sounds really beautiful, okay? Um, so it's playing and it sounds really good, but what you don't know is what plays constantly in the mind of my head. What I hear loud and clear in my ear is something that keeps me on, that I'm gonna remember, and I'm gonna be able to stay in it. I'm gonna be able to stay, as we call musicians, in the pocket, because I hear the constant. So it may look like other people's life it sounds good. Turn the click up if you can. But you don't hear that. You may not know that. But that's the love of God in your life that will keep you steady. When everything gets off and the band wants to play something else, hit the click up. When the band wants to go somewhere Bridge, else, two, when your kids want to go off four. on the world, when the addiction tries to come back in, when things get off and not playing the same thing, we're going to remember that God loves us. And he's with us no matter what. That's where we settle. That's where we end up is the click that God loves us and he'll never leave us and he'll never forsake us and he will always be there with us. Just keep that playing. You can take the click down a second. In John chapter 13, Jesus has an amazing moment with his disciples. He's about to face the hardest thing he ever will face on planet Earth. He's about to go to the cross for the weight of the world and all the sins that entangle us. He's about to go to the cross and he does something amazing in John chapter 13 and verse 1. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave the world and return to his Father. Skip to verse 4. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and then what did he do? He poured water in a basin and he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. 
Back then, walking was not, they didn't have closed-toed shoes like we have today. Feet were filthy, feet were disgusting. He took on the lowest form of a servant and said to every one of his disciples, which we are today, he said, I am doing this for you. I am all in with you. I'm all in for you. I'm going to go to the cross and I'm going to take on every bad thing you've ever done, every bad thing you ever will do, and I'm going to release it from your life so you can be free in me. Never forget what I'm going to do for you. That's your clip. That's what we should remember. He's all in with you. So when it gets tough, it gets hard, and you say, am I all in with Jesus? Am I all in with this community thing? Am I all in with this scripture reading thing? Am I all in with this recovery thing? Am I all in with it? He's all in with you. Can you be all in with him? I want you to close your eyes right where you're at. And I want to take a moment. And I want to sing this song. Turn the click up a second. This is your click. God's love for you. If you hear a lady talking, that's the guy. That tells us what's coming up next. The bridge, the verse, the chorus. He's going to guide you. That click. That you could never forget how much God loves you. You could never forget how much he cares for you and he's for you and what he can and wants to do on the inside of you sings when you sing I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you Let that sit in a second. Say, God, you're my clip today. Maybe you've never heard the message of Jesus before. Maybe you've never come face to face in a, in a meeting like this, but you've never said, okay, God, I'm going to go all in with you. Maybe for some of you, that's a relationship that you're going to give to God. Maybe for some of you, that's saying yes to Jesus for the first time. Maybe for some of you, that says, I'm going to up my belief level in who Jesus is. I'm going to up my belief level that he can heal me. I'm going to up my belief level that he can restore relationships. I'm going to up my risk level. I'm going to step out of the boat. I'm going to up my click level and know, God, how much you love me. You can say it this way. I'm going to up my love level, and I'm going to know, God, that no matter what I face or go through, you're going to be there for me. If you would say today, I'm going all in, God, show up, show off this week in my life, raise your hand right where you're at. It's something different for everybody. God, I'm going all in with my trust with you. I'm going to build my life on your love. I'm going to trust in you alone. Come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. we got a couple minutes here. I want us to sing this song, but if you raise your hand and you're going to say, okay, God, I'm going to go all in with you. Let's build our life on this love. You may have to trust him. I'm going to trust what you say. God, there's nothing like you. So we're going to step out in faith, right? This is us stepping out of the boat. This is you saying before the storm comes, this is my belief level. This is my risk level. This is my click level. God, as I do it. God, we close our eyes. We worship you in these next